Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today's video I'm going to doing a video on how to breed the roaches and how to set them up. Now this is a 2020 version of um of how to uh, set up your roaches. So this is up to date information, no wrong information, up to date for everything you need to breed your roaches. If you didn't know, I myself breed your roaches uh for my dragon venom and uh, I have a little uh, business which I sell which I sell some new roaches uh now and again there and here. Uh, when, when you know, when I can or when he really wants them, as well as that, I I do sell them in my beer group. I own a beer dragon group for Ireland, where I'm from, and if you you're from Ireland and you're beer dragon owner, you you can um, uh look at look in the the link in the description or description, and it'll be I'll give you and that will be linked to um my Facebook group where you can uh, request uh to be in the group if you're from Ireland and have a beer dragon. I do sell the brooches there, and I also have my personal um, p uh, business page for, for selling the brooches. So if you want the brooches as well, and around Ireland, uh, you, you can order to PM me there on uh, Facebook or Messenger, and then you can get your order to brooches off me. Some things you're going to need to successfully breed your um, the brooches are a dark tub or tub to put them in, a heat source which you could use a heat mat. Some food which I need to uh, put back up for my baby ones. And you're also going to need some dewbroaches. Here are, here are some females. If you see here, you can see a male at the bottom of the wings. Females, little, little uh, tip to say, females have a small little sub wings and then males have big wings. Now if you have a big tub with uh, no ventilation holes in it, like this one, which um, I'm using my other small kind of um, critter keeper, like the one I showed you a few minutes ago. Or two seconds ago, um, uh, I'm using that one as good ventilation. I'm having a small. I only have a small colony, but I will be more ordered more soon, so I will be upgrading to fully this one, and I will put the heat mat on the outside rather than the inside. And when I will when when I do that, I will be putting some ventilation holes in. So I probably will do a video on that. But for now, I'll just link a video up in the one of the corners, either this corner or that corner, uh, about how to um put holes in um uh. Tub for your debroaches. For the Hema, you can get a sticky one, or you can get maybe you might get lucky like the ones I have, which was is not non sticky, it's just the normal Hema. Um, you can get ones like them, or you can get sticky ones. With sticky ones, I uh, post a video as well up here that that you can um on a card that you can um uh watch and you can learn how to uh and see how to stick uh Hema a sticky Hema onto the bottom of your uh, debroach enclosure. As you can see here, this is my small colony that I said about we'll keep in. I am going to put, be putting in the big tub once I order a bit uh, more deer brooches. But I do have only 10 at the moment. I know it's a very small colony. But I just wanted to see how would it work. Because I did try before and it didn't work and they all died off. So I wanted to just order 10. See it work. I then looked out. Uh, look, yeah, looked out and it worked. So I'm just going to order more, maybe 50 or 100 more uh, deer brooches. But another, another thing that you need for your deer brooch colony. Is the egg crates. The egg crates um, make a hiding place and a dark place for your deer roaches to breed and uh, hide from or they lay, uh, lay their live birth because deer roaches give, do, uh, give, the live, give birth to live, not, not eggs, they give their birth to live, you know, live babies. So, um, so that's just a, the tip with them is you can, oh, you can, like my one, it's okay, they're not too close to even put together, like they do have a little bit of gap, there's not like kind of like stagnant, like poop and all in there. Because I do clean it regularly, kind of a, a, once a pretty week. But you can put a cardboard in between them to give them a gap. But uh, I don't think I need a gap because they're mostly fine. But you can if you want, which you can. But um, that's it for like, your air crates. As far as your air crates can go, you can just give them enough hiding place which, with loads of air crates. Where you can get air crates is quite, um, they're kind of hard. But if you ask your local cafe at the start of the day, and then come back at night if they say, oh, we have 10, or have 10 now, or 10 later, and you can come back, and then you can collect them then. That's a good way of doing it, rather than buying uh, some expensive ones on Amazon or eBay. Another thing is, you don't have to do it, but I did it, and it's a very good idea. With the uh, super worms, um, uh, Mori worms, that you, should, you could call them, um, the containers, I cut them a little bit, so then the dibbers can go in and uh, have their food. As long as you can see here, uh, this food has been destroyed. Uh, yeah, I do use a kind of um, 
uh, roach, roach tail of uh, all different stuff. If you want me to make a video, if you want me to make a video about this, you should com comment below and like and uh, like this video, and I'll make a how to make a roach tail with a blender because I do not have a blender, and this lockdown COVID nineteen business, I cannot get a blender at the moment, so I've had to improvise and make one without a blender, which which works okay. I cannot use it with my babies as they poop in it and make it all mouldy, but the adults just find they don't poop in it when they're kind of more um, sensible. And they have kind of sent a lot of sense to them, and then they don't poop in it, they just poop on the accretes, which is okay. So, so the, the males, I um, the, all the breeding ones, uh, that I use, like my uh, studs, uh, you, you can call them, I, I uh, give them dry food with a mix of greens and uh, carrots, as you can see there. Yeah, so that's a good uh, tip you could as well with the Super Mario or Mario um, worms. There we call them with the containers you can put cut a hole in them and your your um adults uh, can go in or babies you can use them for if you cut them really low um they can go in and get their food and then you, you know you just have to pick it up then it makes it e life easier for you to clean up their food now on to the last thing with the hema you need heat obviously you can put, you need heat for them to breed because they're tropical species so they need heat to breed and maybe we're in florida where they're originally from you won't make me need as much heat or humidity as well. Because humidity is another thing they need. They need the humidity to uh, shed their molts because they do molt as they get bigger, like reptiles or not like us, where our skin is kind of stretchy and like it stretches out. Where there it's kind of like um, you know, this it's not very stretchy, so they just shed out their skin. So you you need, you do need um, a bit of humidity, but not a lot. Um, yes, yeah, they need humidity as well. If they don't actually get humidity, they can get like. In, in respiratory infections like infections of their lungs and all because they can't breathe properly because they're, they're supposed to be a tropical you know a tropical area so they need high humidity but the heat the, the heat they need um is around uh, 95 degrees fahrenheit or, or if you're using celsius it's 35 degrees celsius around that area kind of the high 20s the high 20s low 30s 30 35 maximum Mix, maximum so like that's the highest temp you could put them at and, that, and they, they would do perfect at that temperature that's all for this video on how to breed the dubro just 2020 with all the update information if you like this video don't forget to give it a like uh maybe subscribe to me and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you get a notification when i post bye